So our first lecture, um, uh, our first uh, talk actually, uh, is life, death and shopping. So every minute, 300 million cells die in the human body. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Death, failure. Uh, Hi Dina, sorry to interrupt. Your uh, screen share looks super small. Could okay. you reshare your screen? Sure, yeah. Um, let me rearrange it. Sorry. Oops, sorry. Is it better? Much better. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so every minute, three million cells die in the human body. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about death, failure, or success, depending on your point of view. Uh, whether we predict death, engine failure, uh, churn, uh, or purchase uh, prediction, the basic concept is the same. Uh, as, um, we are predicting events over a timeline. Usually, survival analysis models predict time until uh, a, a time until event, the duration of a cycle until uh, until the occurrence uh, of an event. And what I'm going to offer in this talk uh, is a different perspective in which we take all the past history of a device or a user and use that history in order to predict the future. Uh, and this is exactly what I did in my last position. I'm a data scientist. Um, in my current position, I'm building acoustic model, models. Um, my thesis topic cl is classifying online persuasion. And last uh, in my last position, um, I, um, I what I did was purchase, purchase uh, prediction. So this is Alex and Bob. Uh, very nice to meet them. Uh, those are actually two user, users uh, in a retail platform. Their activities contains uh, different web, web pages over time, such as category and search, um, and detailed pages of different kind of, uh, of items. And what we want to predict using, uh, we want to predict whether or not Alice and Bob will actually purchase in the near uh, future. So what we want to do is aggregate all their past uh, events in order to predict whether or not they will purchase something in the near future. Uh, we can use the two uh, weeks before in order to uh, predict what, uh, what will happen in the third week and use the data uh, from week two and three in order to predict the fourth week and so on. What we want to do is use moving windows um, of the data. Uh, so if something happened in, in all kinds of de different dates uh, for Alice and Bob, uh, we want to um, get those, that, those data points, points according to a specific date in which we will run some kind of a, a machine learning model. So we have all kinds of different um, modeling run dates, and we want to see um, what is the relevance uh, day from a specific event to that modeling date. In order to do that, um, we, we take uh, the first week and the second week to predict the third week, the second and the third week to predict the first week, and so on. And we will try to avoid dates and user uh, from overlapping when we're dealing with the evaluation of our models. So when we are creating the, those data points, we're creating it over time with some kind of a, a date list, and then we cast it to our data frame. And after we 
we create th that uh, feature in our um, in the, in our um, in our data frame, we calculate the relevance date to that day. Uh, the relevance date, the distance from that relevance day of the model. Um, and then we filter out all kinds of data points that are irrelevant uh, for our uh, data collection. For example, maybe something that happened three weeks ago or three months ago uh, isn't relevant uh, to what we want to predict because it's too far away and it's just a uh, noise in our model, in our uh, data modeling. So we actually append, uh, it's, it's, key, it's kind of um, um, creates all kind of um, uh, duplicates our data frame according to each and every model run date. And we create, we aggregate all those, um, all those uh, data frames into one using union and reduce. And then we use the Windows functions uh, in order uh, to calculate what happened in, in the three days before and the four, in the four days before and so on. Window functions, uh, you might know them from SQL uh, or pandas. Um, what we want to do is take all our data points and our relevance day and actually create some kind of an aggregation to see how many categories days uh, Bob, uh, Bob had five days before uh, the model run date. How many searches, how many detail pages, how many searches two days before, uh, and the same for Alice. So in SQL, it's also called Windows, window functions and in a pandas, it's expanding and rolling uh, uh, functions. Uh, when we are um, talking about expanding wi windows, uh, we actually talk about exclusive, which means the first and the second day, and the first and the second and the third day. And a rolling window, we're talking about data points that are exclusive. Uh, when we're using PySpark, when, when we want to use PySpark, when we're dealing with uh, large, uh, very large data sets. Um, we also use Windows window functions. So when we're creating a window and we aggregate them by the ID of the users and the run dates, and we order them by dates and arrange a uh, starting and a start point and an end point. And those starting and end points are actually what we're um, we're playing with if we want to do it inclusive or exclusive. So on th that time window, we can create all kinds of different functions. It can be sum, average, or standard deviation. And then we can use that to create more features to our data frame. Again, it can be inclusive or exclusive. It, it depends on the, the range and the starting and the beginning and the starting and the ending of the range. So uh, this is an example for how it will be, uh, how it will look if we're taking the, just the day before uh, over the time window and we want to aggregate the sum of the events. Uh, the final aggregation of the numeric features is, uh, we look something like that uh, and we will aggregate those columns in order to achieve um, the aggregation of all the dates for a specific, a specific type of events. Um, for a um, categorical feature, it will look a little bit something like that, uh, you're just using group by instead of pivoting. And what's next? What after uh, we're done with all the category of features, we just count them, um, just see how, uh, how what what is the counts and the average and all kind of, um, of aggregation of those features. Um, the next thing we can use is NLP to sequence uh, behavior of of customers. Uh, the, uh, the 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 use the customer funnel uh, is all kind of events. Um, 
that are different uh, from the uniqueness of, of the their uh, of the events. So when when we're just seeing data pages and, and searching like for uh, uh, for tales or something like that, there are a lot of events that are similar to that. But then again, where we're checking for a specific uh, um, product, it's it's less, it's more and more unique. Um, in in order to weight those events, we can use uh, TF-IDF methods, and uh, we can use those method in, methods in order to weight different kinds of, of events in our uh, customer file. Um, 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 and, but when we're just waiting those events, we don't uh, give any attention for the order of the events. So when we're taking a concept that's called Enneagram from NLP, we can actually model our, the, sequence, the, the, the sequence themselves of, of, the, the, um, uh, of the events in the customer funnel. But this is all of those topics and how to model um, user behavior using NLP. It's for a longer um, talk. And during this uh, talk, more than one and a half billion cells died, died in your uh, body during, during this lecture. And this is it for this lecture. Thank you.